Good morning, Fellowship Church. Can y'all stand? If you're able, please stand. If not, you can remain seated. Praise God. Let's do something this morning. The Bible says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Can I get, has anybody got a shout in the house? God is good, and God is good all the time. Praise God. Well, Pastor Michael's on vacation. He asked me if I would. How about Lee's song today? So we're going to do our very best to give God glory and give him praise in this house. Would you join us in singing? We're going to dance, dance, dance in the freedom we know we're going to dance, dance in the freedom we know we're going to dance, dance, dance in the freedom we know because the freedom we know is going to last forever. Hey! The world turns in all of its ways, but I'm so set on a holy night when all of the earth is done. Till I will praise Him. There's no end to the love that He gives. And broken dreams have a life again, and the whole Father is a key. Let us praise Him. Mystery, a mystery unthinkable, but he took a fall just to save my soul. Now love is the life I know, and on and on and on we'll be singing, souls and free in the one I love. Come on, come on. lady come come all the lost and the found let us rise up with a holy sound all the earth unified as one just to praise him in full view with nothing to hide like a city on a hill we're gonna shine in the light of the freedom let us praise him mystery a mystery unthinkable but he took a fall just to save my soul and love is the life I freedom we know because the freedom we know is gonna last forever now dance 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 in the freedom we know we're gonna dance dance in the freedom we know we're gonna dance 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 in the freedom we know because the freedom we know is gonna last dance 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 in the freedom we know we're gonna dance dance in the freedom 
you worship today. Let's worship him because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, we give you praise, Lord, and we worship you, Lord.
God. Hallelujah. You're worthy, sir, to be praised and adored. Glory to God. How many know we serve a good, good father? He's the best father you'll ever have. You know, thank God for our earthly dads. But, you know, they, they let us down from time to time. They didn't mean to. They didn't want to. But just human frailty. They let us down, you know. But, you know, our good, good father will never let us down. A thousand stories of what they think you like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers for and why but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say
is who I am, is who I am, is who I am. You're a good, good father, is who you are, is who you are, is who you are, and I'm loved by you, is who I am, is who I am, is who I am. many of you know he's a good, good father. Hey Amen. It's good to see you all here today. And it's, it's especially good to see Sister Nanny Ricks here today. We've all, and I know I saw my brother Charles back there in Florence. And who else? And, and by the way, Penny. Penny, she has retired now, so she can come to church more. <laughs> Good to see you, Penny and Larry. Sadie, praise God. You don't have a hard time recognizing Sadie. She's got that energy. She's ready to go. And anybody else here today that I, if I didn't uh, see you, overlooked you, we're glad to have you. Thank you for being here today. And uh, I believe we're going to have a good time. Pastor Michael, in his absence, Brother Wayne and the team are doing the music, and I think they've done exceptionally well. But they're on vacation, one that they needed, and it was long coming because uh, they spent a lot of hours in the ministry working, doing things behind the scene. And a lot of that we don't see. We see out here on Sunday morning, maybe Wednesday evening, that kind of thing. But uh, they're constantly doing something and working even behind the scene after hours. So just turn around, wave at somebody or give them a, a good hand wave or fist pump or something. Let them know you're glad to see them today. And I want to make, you may be seated for just a moment. I want to make mention uh, at the end of the service, see Brother Wayne uh, to turn your uh, money in for sponsor, those of you that are sponsoring the kids to go to King Dominion. So do that. And uh, it'll be good. I think it's a good thing what you're doing for those kids. And we appreciate Brother Wayne doing that. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Doing a good job, working hard. And uh, Wayne can fill in in so many places. He can even fill in when I'm gone sometime and preach. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a good representative of Jesus Christ and the church. And we're glad to have all of you. So anything... You got an announcement, don't you? I do. All right, come on and make that announcement, Wendy. Good morning, everybody. For Good who's that do not know me, my name is Wendy Martinez, and I wanted to bring back an announcement that we are going to be starting back the women's ministry. <laughs> and we have actually made a plan for June the 26th at 9.30 to 11. We're going to have a guest speaker. Uh, we're going to have some morning breakfast for you guys, and we would love for you to come out and just let you know that if there's any of you that still feel uncomfortable, we will have arrangements that you can wear your mask if you would like, and we will have some seating distances for the ones that still feel uncomfortable. And we would love to have each and every one of you there, and we have some amazing plans coming up in for the future. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll right here, be here at church. And also, um, uh, what was I going to say? Did I have a senior moment or something? Rita, good to see you. Praise God, always good to see Sister Rita. She's always got that bright smile. Always good to have everybody. And Wednesday night, we're going to be over at the start back at the campus on White Oak Road and our 7 o'clock. So we're looking forward to that. We'll be able to open things a little more over there for activity, for kids and that kind of thing. Got a lot of things in store. Also coming up is our uh, uh, Rekindle the Fire Sunday. Uh, Pastor uh, Dean Perry will be here on Sunday morning. Prophet Donald Moore will be here on Sunday afternoon at 6 o'clock. 
So we're going to have a wonderful time, and don't miss it. Put it on your calendar. Do not miss that. I tell people, if you miss that, you're going to miss what maybe God has to say for you because I believe that's a special day. So I know everybody's, you know, vacating and doing things right now and a lot of different things going on. But make your plans around that. We're going to have a, a good time together. Amen. Ushers, come on down. We're going to receive our tithes and offering. I believe, Brother Wayne, you're going to do that this morning. I have one more thing, Bishop. Okay. Um, I want to let you all know that we do have a sign-out sheet out at the front at the Welcome Center. If you'd um, sign up, that way we kind of have a head count on how many will be coming. Um, if you have family, friends that would like to come, they're welcome. Um, if you have, maybe if you talk to somebody today, tomorrow, whenever, if you know that they won't be coming, if you just let Annette Hunter or Lorraine Shirley or me, myself, my number is on the bottom of the list if you'd like to take that. Um, if you don't know theirs, and you could contact us and just let us know. Amen. Be sure to participate in that. That's going to be good for you ladies. Praise God. How many is ready to give? You know, when you give, you're putting your faith to work. You know, you say, I'll show you my faith. Well, I'll show you my faith by my works. I participate in the things I know that I'm supposed to participate in. And so I participate in this offering because that's put showing God, me and you, that I have faith. Because I have faith that if I would give, that God will open the windows of heaven, pour me out a blessing that I do not have room to contain. Father, we want to thank you today for this time of the service. Father God, we bring our tithe, we bring our offering, we bring our gift unto you, and we present them to you, sir, and we worship you, sir, with our tithe and offering and gifts. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy to receive our praise, our adoration, our love, and our finances, Lord. And we bring them to you, and we just worship you and give you praise and glory and honor for all that you're going to do. We thank you, Lord. You said that if we would give, it would be given unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosom. We want to thank you now in advance, Lord. You're speaking to the hearts of obedient men and women, and they channel their finances into our procession so that we can upbuild your kingdom. And we give you praise for it, sir, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. stories of what they think you like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good Good Father, is who you are, is who you are, is who you are, and I'm loved by you, is who I am, is who I am, is who I am. Amen. He's a good, good Father. Praise God. Would you welcome Bishop Johnson this morning? Brother Wayne, appreciate that. Good worship service this morning. And uh, you may be seated. Always good to see everybody. Did you, you're talking to somebody else. No. Not to me. You're talking to yourself? No. I'm not talking. Lois says she's talking to herself. She wanted to talk to somebody intelligent, so she's talking. <laughs> I'm just kidding with her. We have fun at my house. How many of you believe it's, it's all right to have fun? And that's what fellowship is all about. Fellowship. Name our church. Fellowship. You know what fellowship is, don't you? Two fellows in a ship. 
being corny, <laughs> but it is good to see you, and uh, always good to see you, always good to see you in the house of the Lord. And so we're going to preach the word and bring the word to you this morning, and uh, it's going to be a good word, because I done heard myself preach it. And so I got a little insight into what I'm going to be talking about already. But if you would, I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we'll try to get these scriptures up on the screen for you. And I appreciate those that are working in the sound department. They do such a good job. Because sometimes it's hard to follow me. But those guys are right on it. And I appreciate that and what they do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. Now how do we get the victory? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's already blessed us, Ephesians says, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And the Bible said he supplies all of our needs. And so our victory is by and through and in Jesus Christ. Verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. He said be unmovable. That means don't be shaken by anything. The Bible said in the last days everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But let everything not shake you. You see all these things coming and all of these events are happening. Be unmovable. Be steadfast in the Lord. You know the devil is trying to move you. But you don't have to move. Demons report back to Satan and said, I'm trying to get him off of the word, but I can't, I can't get him off of, I can't get him to move for anything. So the devil says, okay, we'll try this demon. He sends this demon over there and he comes back and says, I can't get him off of the word. Say, that's me. Say, I'm steadfast, unmovable in the work of God. So no matter what the devil tries to bring you away, it says be steadfast. And be unmovable. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Doing good. You know you can be doing good and grow weary. You can be doing all the right things and grow weary. Right in the midst of it. So let's not grow weary while we're doing good. While we're coming to church. Lois talked with two ladies this week and wonderful people. And they said, Sister Lois, said, I thought when this pandemic hit and we started, had to, you know, stay home and watch everything on social media, and she said, you know, I got very comfortable. Said, I started really getting complacent. She really started enjoying just the ease of staying home. And says, but I realize that I can't get at home what I can get in church. And that's going to change. That's what they said. So don't grow weary in doing good, in coming to church. Don't grow weary while you're bringing your tithes and your offerings. For in due season, you will reap if you don't faint. But the devil wants to get you tired of believing, tired of confessing, tired of praising and worshiping God, and tired of expecting but don't stop now. That's the name of my message. Don't stop now. God is working behind the scenes. There's a scripture in the Message Bible in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 3. I believe it's long about it, verse 8 or 9. It says God is working behind the scene all alone. I mean God is working. Even when we can't see him, he's working behind the scene. So don't grow weary while you're doing good. Be unmovable. You don't move. The devil will try to get you weary in your convictions. He wants, you to, he wants you to lose your hope. 
He wants to get you just thinking, well, it's been too long. It's been so long. Nothing ever turns around. It doesn't look like anything's going to turn around. I just give up. I've been reading my Bible. I've been meditating and, and I've been praising God and worshiping God, and I've been listening to CDs. When I go to work on my car, I put in a CD, I listen to it. Then when I come in back, I listen to it. Then when I get home at night, I listen to more some CDs. And it's just been too long. Well, there's another way of looking at that. The manifestation is almost here. Their turnaround is just around the corner. It may have been weeks or months or years, but guess what? Your faith has been working at that mountain all of this long time. So don't stop now. Now look at Mark chapter 11, a very familiar verse of scripture with us. You mean to tell me you're going to let the devil stop you now and the finish line is right in front of you? I just know in the spirit realm, victory is just... One more day. It's a day closer. It's closer now than it was yesterday, than it was last week, than it was last month, or even a year ago. Mark 11, 22 and 23. He said, have faith in God. Verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain... Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he said. He says, say to this mountain. In other words, mountain represents your problem. Say to this mountain, get out of my way. And if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe, you believe the things that you say will come to pass, that problem has got to give in. Because God has been working on it all this time. He's working behind the scene. And that mountain that looked like that it wasn't going to go anywhere and it was a lot bigger than you thought. But you said, I got my faith working. And the devil's staring right at you and says, it's never going to happen what you're believing for. It's never going to happen. But the good news is, God's been working on it behind the scenes all the time. And your faith is working. And faith works if we will work faith. So don't stop now. Your mountain is coming down. The wall of of things that have you hemmed in is coming down. And God is working on your behalf in the spirit realm because you've been walking by faith. So don't stop now. So maybe, maybe... It could be the day that that mountain comes down. It could be the day that things change. Blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped. It could be the day that you get a call from your daughter or son at Wayward and they said they're coming home. This might be your day. Tell your neighbor, this might be your day. Don't stop now. Now, look at Mark chapter 4. And we're going to look at, to begin with, verse 26 and 27. And he said, So in the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow up, he knoweth not how. Now notice it said, The seed shall spring up and grow up. You just keep going to bed. You planted the seed. You put your faith out there and you keep getting up. And you don't know how it's working. But the seed of faith, just like a seed in the ground, when you can't see it working, there's something happening. And I'm telling you today in the spirit world, something is happening. Maybe our physical eyes have not seen what we want to see yet, but God is working behind the scene. Don't you dare get discouraged. Don't you dare give up now. Say, I will not stop now. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. You've cried too many tears. you come too far now. You prayed too much. You confessed too much. You worshiped. You praised God. You held on. Come hell or high water. 
you come too far to turn away now. Don't give up now. You see, the devil wants to blur your vision. You know, he wants to dirty up your spiritual glasses, as it were. You know, if in, in the natural, if you wear glasses, if you take the glasses off and they get dirty and you take a cloth and you squirt some cleaner on them, right? And you, you wipe the dirt off. Why? So you can see clearly. So you can see things better. So I'm telling you, when the devil's trying to dirty up the screen of your vision, you just take the squirt bottle out of God's promises, squirt it on, 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 the, on that problem and let the word of God cleanse it and, and do away with that dirt so that you can see clearly again. And when you see clearly and when you're seeing clear, you go, God's on my side. Victory's mine. I can still have what God promised me. Sometimes in the winter, you know, you get into your car and, you know, it's cold and, and the frost all over the windshield and you can't see. What do you do? Turn on the defroster, right? Why? So it can get it off so you can see clearly. And you can see more clearly when you clean the glasses, when you clean the windshield. And so that is the way it is with our spiritual life. When you start seeing properly, when you take the squirt gun of God's word and spray on that problem as it were and wipe it off with the word of God so that you can see clearly, you will see that you are more than a conqueror. You'll see that you are a winner. You'll see that victory is yours in Jesus' name. In the natural, it don't look that way. But God is supernatural. And we serve a supernatural God. And God is working behind the scene in your behalf. I think we ought to get happy and shout about that. So just get your glass cleaner out and clean your vision off. Amen? I look at Joseph's life. Joseph was 17 years of age. He had a vision, but he opened up his big mouth to his brothers. And they said, you mean to tell us that one day we're going to bow down to you and you mean to tell us that, you're, that our sheaves are going to bow down to you? He had a vision, but the vision got tainted. It got all messed up. It could have made him quit and stop. It got tainted by some things going wrong, and he was sold into slavery. And so it... it it muddled up the, the screen of his vision. He was lied about. He was thrown in prison. He was forgotten about, but he didn't stop. He kept on working on cleaning the screen of his visions. Our problems, sometimes, our, our vision gets messed up. You know why? Because we allow circumstances, people, emotions, conduct, attitudes, their doubt and their unbelief to rub off on us, and then we want to say, it's no use. I quit. I give up. This has been going on too long. I've been praying about this thing for a long, long time. I prayed and I prayed and I worshiped and I confessed and I hadn't seen anything happen yet. No, keep in mind, you're supposed to have what God promised you. But that can change today. It might change this very day. Abraham t was told by God, you're going to have a son. But what happened? Things got in the way. His vision got all blurred. His screen got dirty. And Sarah tried to help him out by saying, well, you can go into my handmaid and we'll have that child. And God said, no, 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 Abraham. Clean your blurred vision up. It will be as what I told you, Abraham, it'll be just like I said. And he got it. He got exactly what God had promised because he cleaned the vision up, the screen up so he could see clearly. And Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old when they gave birth to Isaac. Now, how many of you know that's a miracle? How many of you 
you, how many of you know anybody that's 100 years old and 90 years old or having children? <laughs> so that absolutely was a miracle. No way in the natural that could come to pass. That's what Satan's saying to you. No way in the natural. Just look, look. Look at all the things that's happened in a year's time, a year and a half. Look at all what's going on and try to get you discouraged and get you thinking negative and get you thinking on all of these things and get you weighed and bow down with all of that. But just like God said, Abraham, if you'll believe, I'll bring the promise to pass. And Abraham believed God. And the Bible said Abraham staggered not at the promises of God, but through faith he believed what God had promised him. See, he had to clean the screen of his vision. Why? So you can see correctly. And he got exactly what God had promised. And some of you, you need to clean your screen. You need to clean it up because we want to see clearly. See, God is not our problem. Our screen gets dirty sometimes. But wipe the problem clean with the word of God. How did your screen get dirty? Well, probably circumstances, people and sometimes their attitude and conduct, people treating you wrong and talking about you and lying about you and doing all that kind of stuff and saying things. So you just kind of, you know, get tired and you get weary and you just want to quit. No. Say, I'm not giving up. Say that. I won't stop now. God is working behind the scene. Look in 2 Kings chapter 6. Very interesting story here. There's a famine in the land and nobody is allowed in or out of the city. Starvation was so bad, mothers would eat children. Little babies, they'd eat them. And the king was so upset with Elisha and said, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to take his head off of his shoulder. And and the king, he was so furious with Elijah because, see, Israel was warring against the uh, Samaritans. And they were having a war. And so every time that Syria would come up with a plot how to attack Israel, every time they come up with a plan to attack Israel, God would step in. And God would show them what that attack was. And every time they planned it, they were able to avoid it. Because God was on their side. And so finally, the king got everybody together. He said, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Every time we plan this, this, we got great military men, we got highly intelligent men, we got generals, we got everybody in place, and they know these things, and yet how are they finding out? He said, we got a spy in the camp. That's what we got. And finally somebody spoke up and said, no, 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 king, there's no spy in the land. But there's a prophet over there in Israel by the name of Elisha. And God shows him every time we plan a strategy to attack them and they know in advance and they can escape. He said, King, God even knows, he even knows what's going on in your bedchamber. I bet he got the shaking in his boots. <laughs> and so he said, where is this man at? Where, where is this prophet at? He said, he's down in Dothan. He said, all right, we're going to pull another surprise attack. They don't expect us. We're going over there. We're going to surround them, and we're going to destroy them. So they go and surround the mountains in Dothan just before daylight, and they're, so they're all surrounded. Finally, daybreak gets here, and Elisha's servant walks out, Gehazi. He's going to get a bucket of water. I always say this, but I just imagine in my mind, Elisha sitting in there eating his Krispy Kreme donut and drinking his... Uh, 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 Dunkin' Coffee. So he just relaxed. He goes in there and said, Master, Master, I went outside and the hills are filled with the Syrian army. He said, what are we going to do? And so the man of God gets up, walks outside, and here's what he said. He looked 
He said, God, open my servant's eyes that he might see. And God opened his eyes and he saw in the spirit realm and it was filled with the host of angel, angelic beings. And then Elisha said something, there be more that be with us than be with them. And if you could have your spiritual eyes open this morning into this service right now, this time, your eyes would be open. You will see that there's angels in this room. Angels fill this room. And there are more that are with us than are with them. I come to tell you, you got God on your side. You're not going to lose. You're not going to fall. You're not going to come to nothing. You're not going to lose everything you had. You're not going down to nothing. God is on your side. God is for you. How many of you believe that God will take care of you? Because God is for us. Amen? And if you'll read on the story, and I don't have time to read all the scriptures, but if you'll read on, Elisha prayed, God smite the Syrians with blindness. And they were blind, couldn't see. So Elisha says, okay, come on, you follow me. They didn't know where they were being led to, but he led them down to Samaria. And the king said there, when he got down to Samaria, he said, you want us to kill them? Smote them? That's what he said. He said, should we smote them? He said, no, don't smote them. In fact, feed them. Now that sounds strange, don't it? Just captured that army, they were out to kill them. Now he's going to let them go and said, feed them. God says, feed your enemy. Do good to your enemy. See, that's real Christian. That's hard, isn't it? That's hard sometimes. Somebody that's treated you wrong, talked about you like a dog, and you forgive them. But Jesus said this outstanding statement. He said, if you forgive men their trespasses, I will forgive you of yours. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will I forgive you of yours. So my relationship relative to God is how I forgive somebody else. I know they've done you wrong. All of them things I named, I've been, I've, been, I've been done to, okay? I've been talked about, lied about, persecuted, you name it, I've been there. You can't be 50-some years in the ministry and not get attacked by the devil's plots and plans. Because for one thing, he wants to destroy the word of God. He doesn't want this word going forth. He don't want this church going forth. He don't want you going forth. But he's run into an army of God. Praise God. And I'm telling you, there are more that be with us than that be with them. And greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world. God is for you. And then, let me see. Let me see where I want to go. Look at uh, chapter 6, verse 32 and verse 33. We can get that on the screen. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See how his son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? Look, when the messenger come and shut the door and hold him fast at the door, Is not this the sound of his master feet behind me? And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him, and he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I, why, why, why should I wait for the Lord any longer? See, that may be what some of you are saying. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? I've been waiting, I've been praying. I've been studying. I've done all this. I've done all of that. I go to church. I live right. I pay my tithe. And yet all this stuff still happens to me. You ever wonder why bad things happen to good people? Because we have a devil in this world. 
He's, he's a hostile devil. He's an enemy. And you're his number one target because you're made in the image of God. And if you're born again, you're made in the likeness of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and he don't like you, and he's out to gun you down and take a lead pipe to your head, as it were, to stop you because you're made in the image of God. But you got God on the inside, the Bible says. And the Bible says, greater. L listen to this now. Greater is he that's in you. You got Jesus in you? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God is for you. He'll make the crooked places straight. God is for you. He's for Israel. He's for you. He's for me. He's for us. And they said, why should we wait any longer? But look at chapter, uh, uh, look at the next chapter. It's chapter 7, I believe it is, verse 1. Elisha said, hear you the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Underline that. Hear the word of the Lord. You think things can't change? Hear the word of the Lord. You think things can't turn around? Hear the word of the Lord. You think things, you're going, you've been told, you're going to be like this. It's going to be like this the rest of your life. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Let me tell you something. We've all been through stuff, but hear the word of the Lord. For one thing, I know Jesus, by the signs of the time, is coming back real soon. I said he's coming back real soon. And it's called the rapture of the church. And I don't know about you, but I'm not planning on being here. I'm planning on being caught away. And all of this stuff that's going to happen during the tribulation period, all the wrath that God will pour out, he will spare us from that wrath if we're born again, serving him, living for him. Jesus is coming back. I believe that more today than I ever have in my life. Are you ready? Hear the word of the Lord. He's coming again. He's coming back. <laughs> He's coming. Hear the word of the Lord. And then the prophet spoke something in verse 2. He said, he said this. He said, tomorrow by this time, everything's going to turn around. I mean, everything's going to open up. It looked impossible, didn't it? And somebody spoke up and said, wait a minute. If God were to open the windows in heaven, this couldn't happen. And then look what he said. He said, he said to that guy, you'll see it, but you won't partake of it. You won't eat of it. Are you listening? I'm telling you, some of you, your faith, you've been waiting for years and you've been praying, and you've been confessing. Am I in the right crowd this morning? Amen. And it looked like nothing's going to happen. God is working behind the scene. Don't stop now. Because tomorrow might be the day. You might get a telephone call from a wayward son strung out on drugs and say, I want to come home. I'm coming back. I want to come back to God. You might get a telephone call from the doctor this week and said that cancer, that tumor, it's gone. Are you listening? I'm telling you, God can turn things around. He can turn things around in, in a 24-hour period. It might not be tomorrow like it is today. You've been waiting this long, and the devil wants to get you to stop a little bit short. He wants you to get tired and that don't wait one more day. Don't wait one more week. Don't wait one more month. But look at it like this. You're closer now than you've ever been to your answer. You do not want to give up. You do not want to quit now. You want to keep on pursuing. You want to keep on doing the right thing. Don't grow weary in well-doing because in due season you're going to reap. God is working behind the scenes. 
God is still working. He said, you'll see others blessed. You know, you get talking the wrong stuff, believing the wrong stuff. He said, you're going to see others get blessed, but you won't be a part of it. Don't stop now. I talked to so many, it seemed like they're getting discouraged in these last days that you can't afford. You can't afford to give up now. Look, I've been through too much hell and high water to give up now. I have. I'm, I'm, I'm not giving up now. I'm not getting discouraged. I don't like what's going on. I don't like some of the things that happen, but I know God is bigger than that mountain. And your faith has been chipping away at it all the time. You may not see it, but behind the scene, the Holy Spirit is working with you. You're chipping away at that mountain, that mountain of problem, that mountain of sickness, that mountain of depression, that mountain of despair, that mountain of loneliness and hopelessness. God, he, you've been chipping away with it, and God is working on the scene. And tomorrow could be the day. Today could be the day. Next week, but you're closer. Don't give up now. You know, like I mentioned a while ago, and I'm going to try to wind this up. I don't know what time it is. I need to quit. But you know, you, you, you turn your defrost on on your automobile. Why? You can't see clearly. You know, you turn it on and get it off. One day I was at home. <clears throat> I wanted some popcorn. How many of you like popcorn? <laughs> I wanted popcorn. Went in there and put it in the microwave. Nothing didn't happen. I waited. Nothing. nothing. I said, hmm. Went in there, it's on defrost. <laughs> Ain't going to get no popcorn like that. So I, I put that thing on popcorn. You know, my, mine says popcorn. I put it on popcorn. That's about a, a three-minute deal, I think. So I, I put it on popcorn. So I went back in the living room, sit down. And when you're waiting for something, how many of you know 10 seconds can seem like an eternity? <laughs> so 10 seconds went by, I didn't hear nothing. Fif 15 seconds, I didn't hear nothing. Maybe even 30. I mean, it seemed like it was minutes. But I didn't hear anything. So I kind of done like this, and I heard something go, I said, oh, getting a little results here now. Then I heard something again go, pop, pop. I said, ooh. Then I heard it go, pop, pop, pop. Then after a while, it went, pop, 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 pop. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And I had a whole bag of popcorn. But it looked like to start with, I won't get in anything. Well, I want you to know I hear something this morning popping in the spirit realm. You may not see it to start with. You may not hear it to start with, but God is working behind the scene. I hear something popping. It's the spirit of God, and he's about to do something. Jump to your feet and say, God is about to do something. I will not quit now. Come on, give God a shout. Give God a shout. I will not give up. I will not quit. No quitting sense. Lorraine said, I don't have quitting sense. Now, don't say that about my preaching. But I'm not giving up in life. Jesus Christ, October 29, 1969, I got born again. And I have never been the same. And there's a whole lot of things that didn't look like it was working in my behalf. I got born again on my job, started getting persecuted because now I'm a Christian. They see me, you know, at break time, everybody else telling them dirty jokes. I'm sitting over there reading my Bible. What it was, I was bringing conviction. God was bringing conviction to them. I'm reading my Bible. I knew they were over there laughing, sneaking, and talking about me. But that didn't matter to me. I read one day in the scripture, Brother Donald, where God said, Jesus said, when you are persecuted, leap for joy. I said, my God, I got a lot of leaping to do. <laughs> Have you ever been persecuted? You ever been talked about? 
You ever felt like just giving up? I'm talking about in the natural. You just felt like giving up? Yes. Well, he said, go ahead and leap for joy. Yes. Now, how many got a leap in them this morning? You got a leap in you? Go ahead and leap for joy one time. Show the devil, praise God, you're not giving up. You're not going to quit. He can't knock the joy out of you. Yeah, go ahead and praise him. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Woo, glory to God. Look, Lois brought a, Lois, she bought a product one time. It was called Shout It Out. You remember that? Shout it out. I mean, you get a, you get a spot of something on something you were cleaning, you were washing, and it wanted to be tough. You spray that on it, you shout it out. Well, I know you got a tough problem coming against you. I know you've had some things to come up, but I'm going to give you a secret. Praise God, you've been doing all this other stuff. You've been doing that, talking about it, talking about it to your friend, talking about what you're going to do, how to do it, trying to find an answer, and you can't find no answer. But just go ahead right now and look to God's word and shout it out. I said go ahead and shout it out. Go ahead and shout it out. Woo! Hallelujah! Go ahead and shout it out. Praise God. We're going to shout it out. I'm telling you, there's a better day coming. Tomorrow's going to be different. Just act like you already got it and have it. I tell this all the time and I'm quitting. You have nine quittings when you preach. But I tell this all the time. You know, I just refuse to quit. I just refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. I've been, I've been discouraged in my life at times. Pastoring can be one of the most loneliest jobs in the world. You think you've got all these people around you all the time? And you do. But you think, they don't ever have a problem. They don't ever go through anything. No, uh, because everybody expects to look at us and say, well, you know, I know they got the victory. They don't, you don't even think to pray sometimes. But I've been through some hard times. I've seen my wife cry a lot of tears, and it felt like we were just like you. felt like we were all alone. felt like we had nobody to stand with us. But I would always remind myself, Jesus told me, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. The Bible said, the Lord is my helper. Say that, the Lord is my helper. I come to tell you, he'll help you. He'll help you. He'll help you. He'll help you. He's our helper. He's going to help you. Hallelujah. Y'all been through a lot in the last year or two. I mean, Jordan, look what Jordan went through. Jordan asked me the other day, he said, when are you going to preach again? I said, I'm preaching today. He's here today. Praise God. The devil tried to kill him in a wreck. I mean, if you could hear the testimony, what happened to him, and to see him in church, to see him praising God, a young man praising God, look at him, worshiping God. If he can go through all that, to be sure, you can go through a little name calling and things not going right for you all the time, but you know that God's on your side. Just go ahead and rejoice and shout anyway. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to let you go. But I want you to say this. Say, Father, thank you for turning things around. Thank you for answering prayer. And today could be the day that I see the manifestation that I'm believing for. And I will not stop now. There's some dirt that got on my screen, but I'm wiping it off. I won't stop now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, what I want you to do, the Bible says pray you one for another. 
I want you to pray right now, out loud, for that person next to you, on the side of you, either side, in front, or behind you, whatever you have to do, but I want you to pray for that person next to you. Would you lift your voice and pray for them right now? And tell them they're going to make it. Let them know they're not in this thing by themselves. They are going to make it. God is on your side. Praise God. Yeah, I believe he'll answer prayer. Now say this. Say, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I will hold on to my vision. I'll see all of my family serving God. I call my body well. My finances are strong. I'm blessed. I will see the miracle I'm believing for. This is my due season. I won't stop now because I know God is working behind the scene. Now go ahead and shout one more time like you really mean it. Go ahead and shout like you really mean it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Laugh at the devil one time. Ha, 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 ha. I like to do that. The devil say, what are you laughing at? I say, I'm laughing at you. That's right. I learn things in life, you know, just by virtue of being around a long time. I've learned that what you cry about today you will laugh about tomorrow. That is so true. You think about that. Well, I'm glad you came today. Are you glad you come? I'm so glad you were so attentive to listen to the word of God. Thank you for doing that. Be back Wednesday evening. And I'm telling you, we've got some good stuff planned. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for being here. Be back Wednesday. And uh, continue to pray for Pastor Michael and his family. That they're just having a time of enrichment. They'll enjoy themselves and get plenty of rest. And he'll be gun ho when he gets back. All right? God bless you. We will see you next time.